interactive touch and pen features a little bit more. Um, this just describes that we have um, an active tip and power switch and so forth on this pen. And I'm going to go um, to a picture of the pen, which will then allow us to talk about that a little more detail. Oops, that's the projector uh, remote. This is the pen. Um, it's an enlarged picture of the pen. The pen itself is here, and we've enlarged the end of the pen, which I showed you earlier. It has a, an excess door um, on the pen, and you can see me. I'm going to stick my nail underneath the little flap. It is very delicate, so it has a little tether, and so you'd want to be careful not to rip that off of there. Um, it has a on-off switch. This is an enlarged version of that on-off switch and you will notice that right now it's on over here on the slash. If I move it to the O then it's off. Now if I have it on the on position then as I mentioned earlier the status light here is green. If I move it to the off position then this light goes nothing. Um, and so when do you see red? Well, the minute you turn it from off to on, the light goes red and I can't even show it to you because it stays red for just a second. And then the minute it talks to the projector, um, it turns green. And that's really a ready light that says, hey, this pen is ready. Um, you can then also notice that there is a large USB port. Well, it's not that large, but it's right there. And that is where you go to the charging station, which is located wherever it gets placed. In this case, it's right above the wall um, outlet. And there is a fairly long charging cord. And you would plug that into the USB port here to get it the right direction. And when you plug it in, you can then rest this in the, into, in the cradle and it will charge. It takes two hours for it to charge. It holds a charge for about two days if it's on continuously, which probably won't happen. And if you're judicious about it, you'll turn it off when you're not using it. Um, but keep in mind that you have it for two days, even if you forget to turn it off. Okay. And of course you have two of them. So if you're not using both of them, you can have one off and charging while the other one is on. Um, that does close up so that kids won't be tempted to grab those out of there when you don't want them to. So I still have one pen available. That one's over there charging. Um, we have a tip on the end. That active tip can be seen by the, the, actually it's the plastic. There's a sensor in there around that tip and the projector sees that and that's how it knows that it's a pen instead of a finger when it comes to the board. Okay. Um, I have one more thing that I want to mention and that's this. Um, this is called a pull tab. You will notice that I had stored out of your site um, a little bit of information. It is what I've already mentioned, that it can charge in two hours and a fully charged pen will operate for two days. Now, I just want to explain how that happened. Um, I did that ahead of time and, and let's talk. Um, everything I've done with this board and this projector this morning was set up ahead of time. Um, most of your work will be done using smart notebook software and you will set it up ahead of time and you will use it during class. You will have students come to the board and write, you will have students move words around, um, you will move things around, um, you will use some of the um, things in the gallery to engage students. Um, for example, um, in the gallery, notice I'm on the second tab, I'm in the second category called gallery and under administration, not principals, <laughs> not superintendents, but anyone administering this program, we have what we call enhanced resources. Um, paper backgrounds are of interest to you and I'm going to drop to the bottom. There are 101 items and under interactive, let's see what's there. I'm going to get a new page so that you can see that. Um, when I pull that up, here's balloons. Notice I just grabbed them and drug them out. You may have to press that to get it to activate. We'll give it a second. And the computer is not happy, or the board mm -hmm. is not happy. They okay. popped. <laughs> they popped. Oh, there you there go. we go. Um, notice, if it doesn't work the first time, try it again. Um, there's a speaker in the lower corner, so when I press it, hooray! we get a hooray on the balloons. Um, this also has a circle at the top. It's green. That is the rotate feature. So if you wanted the balloons to be upside down, you could do that. Um, in the lower right, and it's always in the lower right, we have a resize feature. So if you want the balloons to be larger, 
one of the great things is, did you notice that they didn't um, smush the way photos do? For some reason, they have worked this software so that it repixelates the picture so it looks as good in large as it did in small. We also have a menu over here that allows us for some options. Um, we can clone, that's copy and paste in one step. We could copy it and go to another place and paste it. Um, we could lock it in place. The balloons would still bubble. Uh, you're just locking in the balloon so that nobody could delete them or resize them. Okay. Um, we could flip the balloon so if you want the purple one to be on the left, um, I believe it would flip so that the purple one is on the left instead of on the right. We still have our speaker. Hooray! There are some other things in the gallery that might be of interest to you. Um, a calendar generator is always interesting to teachers um, because now I would, I would tell you that I don't believe that's a projector issue. I think it's probably a computer issue. So let's try it again, and this time it opens just fine. When I want to generate a calendar for November, I would pick November, and that's not a big deal because your cell phone will do that for you. But when I generate the calendar, again, not such a big deal. But this little arrow has a meaning. And that little arrow means that whatever content is here can be injected onto the page. So when I press that arrow, it takes a second. And it should say, there we go, and it, it injects the calendar onto the page. This calendar now is available for the teacher. I'm going to hit the red X and delete the calendar generator. I don't need that anymore. I don't want to delete Monday. I want to delete. Now, it looks like we're off a little bit. Yeah. Maybe hmm. it's because my finger is in the... <laughs> maybe, maybe if you're over on the other side. I don't know. There we go. Okay. Okay. So, you now have your calendar. I'm going to turn... Down here in the corner, we have an auto hide option. I'm going to turn that on so that when I press that, what that means is this panel is going to collapse the minute I touch so that it's auto hiding. If I need it back, I can always press the tab and it reopens. And the nice thing is then that the, the page is full. You then can take your pen and you can choose a pen color and you can write on it. Um, you could go to your computer and type on it. So if you wanted to do that, you would go to your computer and click here and you would type whatever day that is, something on that day. If I'm still at my computer, I can go to the mouse and I could move that wherever I want. If I decide that I want to circle the 7th instead of the 8th, I can do that. I can go to the gallery and I can find pictures that I would like to add to my calendar. I'll just grab these oranges, not necessarily something that I care about. Notice how I grab the resize in the lower right and change that to a different size. So you could then print this calendar. Um, you will notice that the whole calendar is not viewable. If you would like the whole calendar viewable, then you have to go to the view tool. And down here at the bottom, we are I have chosen page width, and literally what page width means is that the page that I have designed will fill all across the width. But when I do that, some of the page is out of sight. So I can choose entire page instead, and when I choose entire page instead, you will notice that we now see the entire page. We have this gray margin on the left and right, but that's to allow to keep the resolution of length to width appropriate so it's not stretched in the wrong way. And so you have that option. Now I took the liberty of putting a tool up here. Um, that isn't there normally, but it is a tool that allows me to switch instantly. I'm back to full page, to page width. If I press it again, now I'm in full page. I thought I was in full page. <laughs> oh, that's different on this projector. Isn't that interesting? When I go here and do entire page. Hmm. Huh. Just keeping me on your toes, Jim. Yeah, keeping me on my toes. I don't know why that's that way. Huh. What I just did was full screen. Uh, full screen gets rid of the menus at the top. Try that one more time. Let's go back here. Right there. Hmm. Left off the 31st. Well, hmm. maybe. Wait a minute. It's November half. Maybe it doesn't. Oh, <laughs> November, November 31st. November has 30 days. 30 days has, has September, September, April, June, and, and November. There you go. We so learned something So that's why. Today. So it is in full page. All right. So you have those tools up there. Now let's talk about how did I, that tool that I had where we can go between page width 
and in full pa entire page and also the clear ink button those tools were not up there to start with this little gear at the top right and it is always at the top right the little gear when I press it shows me options and there are two tabs the actions tab refers to all the tools on the left side of the menu and the tools tab refers to the tools to the right of the menu on my computer I happen to have two other tools one is math tools and one is for the response devices and we're not using those today those are there as long as that software is installed and that's why mine are there um, you will notice that when I hit tools I now have all the different tools that I might want um, now I'm going to get out of this for just a second so that you can see on the pen tools when I click the pens and I go over here I do get an arrow and I can see all those pens so it's not like I can't see them the same as the view menu I can see all the options for viewing the catch is is that let's take for example this pen this pen has stars on it it's called the um, the star pen no it's not it's called the <laughs> magic pen ah, ah, magic kingdom stars I should know that one all right so um, it's called the magic pen and I use it a lot and so what are my options if I don't have a magic pen here I would have to click pens then I would have to go to this drop down and I would have to click magic pen now I'm ready to use the magic pen I personally because I use it a lot don't want to have to do two or three clicks to get there I'd like to have a magic pen instant so instead of using that option I simply click here and that gives you a magic pen I'll talk about the pen itself later. The same is true here. If I want to be able to go between entire page and page width, I could click the view tool and then click page width or entire page. I want to be able to do that quicker, so I put this tool up there. It looks like a page with a line going across it. It is the symbol for page width. When I press it, then I'm in um, page width and I immediately it toggles to entire page. Clear ink allows me to clear any ink on the page. So you will notice that this is not ink and this is not ink, but when I pressed it, it cleared the ink that was there. So what I've done then is clicked on the gear and then I've dragged Magic Pen up. When I went to the actions, I took the clear ink and dragged it up. And I also took the entire page, page width, and dragged it up. Um, you have one more option and that's this sometimes you would like a tool to be larger and you can drag it so that you will notice that my blue line goes top to bottom and when I release it and sometimes this works a little better if you do it on the computer rather than on the board there we go so now I have a full um, select tool and the mouse I have a hard time remembering to go to the mouse so now I'm going to bring the, the eraser up here above the pens and I'm going to bring the magic pen over here now what that just does is that means that my I have two less in the column here and that means that I have a little more space because there is a third toolbar that third toolbar here allows me my options this is called the properties toolbar and that allows me to pick properties for my pens to pick colors and to pick um, different options whether I want a start with a circle and an arrow and so forth always make sure you go back to the mouse so you're ready to move or do whatever we're back to looking at the calendar and a minute ago I typed on it and I would like to talk to you more about typing so um, I'm on the calendar page I'm going to go to the page sorter which shows me a list of all my pages and I happen to have a page about typing text as my next page okay so I have some things I want to talk to you about typing I will tell you that this is my this is the number one thing that made me a believer in using smart notebook now some of you may have already been working with Word, and if you like Word, you can continue to use Word. However, keep in mind that using Word 
means that you will not be able to use the full capabilities of what this projector allows. And so I'm encouraging you to switch to Notebook, um, which is the product that Smart puts out to use with this projector because, um, again, this is what made me the number one. So just keep that in mind when I explain to you how we type. Now I should mention um, that the way you open Notebook to start with, and let me minimize this and let me just walk you through that. Um, on the desktop, you will have a smart notebook icon that you can double press and that will open smart notebook. Um, you can go to your um, file wherever it's stored if you have one already made and just double press on it and it will open it in a notebook. That's option two. If you're starting a new file, use the desktop, go to the start menu and go all programs. I would never do either of those. Instead, smart did something. They put a menu in the lower right corner. Now most of us only use the lower right corner to look at the clock. That's where we get those lovely messages like your virus project is running out or whatever. Well, what I want you to do is look at that icon again. Um, it is a blue square with a white circle and when I touch it, I get a menu. Now if you don't have that tool there, you would press this little triangle and it would open the menu of the less used tools and since you've never used it before it might be in here yours will look a little different than mine if you're not connected to a board this tool will have a little red x in the corner lower right so it either is a blue square with a white circle if you're connected to a board if you're not connected there'll be the same tool but it will have a red x in the corner when you see it in this menu drag it into the bar so that it's available for you in the future. And so you would click that and at the very top it says notebook. Now there are lots of other choices there which we'll get into another time but let me get back to that. I hit it by accident with my finger and I happened to open Smart Recorder. Uh, we're recording this with Jeff's video camera today so we don't need yes, a Smart we are. Recorder. <laughs> we right. don't need no stinking recorder. So. Here we are, I open notebook, notice it's an untitled notebook, and therefore I could start um, putting things onto the page. So let's talk about what we're going to do. I'm going to go back to the file that I have prepared ahead of time. Now, we've noticed that in the use of the projector, you have to watch your shadow. When I bend over, if I get my shadow too close to the, where I want to press, the, cam the projector does not see me coming to press. So you have to make sure I have to keep my head out of the way so that when I press that it does let the projector see that that's what I want and I'm going to open the file that I had open earlier. Okay, so let's talk about typing text. As I said a minute ago, this really is my number one reason for using this software. In Word, you want to type, you start typing, it starts in the upper left. If you want to type halfway down the page, you have to hit return, return, return to get there or you have to use tabs or spacebar to get where you want. Or you have to use a text box. Now if you've ever created a text box in Word, you know that when you make a text box, you then have to remove the outline, etc. And it just takes a lot of time and effort. The great news about Smart Notebook is, number one, you click and type. And if you want pieces, you click and type, click and type, click and type, you get the pattern. Every time you click, you create separate pieces. So let's say that you were typing um, spelling words. Now, you will notice that this is a pull tab. It's a fancy pull tab in the respect that when I press the arrow, it goes right back to where I had it. I don't have to put it back there. I'll do that again. Pull it out, press the arrow, it goes right back where I had it. Um, those are in the gallery, and you would go to the search box up here and click pull tab, and then you would get one of those um, to, sh to look at for yourself. Um, you literally, when you have it open, you press these two little arrows, which are the edit arrows, and when you press those, it asks you, where do you want the tab? I said I wanted it at the bottom. What do you want on the tab? I said I want to call it number one. And then you double click. Oh, I need to close that tab by pressing the arrows. And now you click here and highlight what's ever in the text box and type your own stuff. And that's how you put on the tab what you want. And then you put it where you want it. And to make it lock in that place, you push this little push pin. 
and when you push that push pin, it locks it in place. So that in the future, even if I move it over here, when I press that arrow, it puts it right back where I wanted it. These are lazy man's pull tabs. You don't have to put them back, they go back on their own. All right, so we're gonna click and type, click and type. Now, there is no typewriter button here, but I can get one if I want by going to that tool list again, and part way down the list, it says show floating tools. When I click show floating tools, they show up over here on the left side of my board. Now they're called floating tools because I can grab the little nub nubby buttons and I can pull them to the other side if I want. However, you will notice that when I put them on this side, they interfere with my tabs. So I might pull these over here. Now the only reason I would have these open would be to get the keyboard. Um, the other tools are all available up here in my tool menu, so I really don't need them. But the keyboard I can open, so when I open it, maybe, notice I'm going to do it a second time. Oh, I know what the problem is. My shadow was too close. I need to keep my head back so that when I press the keyboard, I get a keyboard. Please notice that this keyboard is an on-screen keyboard. You can move it around um, wherever you want to use it. Now, the secret is whether you're at your laptop, sitting at a chair, or whether you're at the board, you simply start typing. However, if you want the typing to go in a specific place, you click there first. So I'm going to go to my computer because you'll be doing most of your typing at your computer. And if I move my mouse, zero in on my mouse, mm -hmm. my mouse is moving. I'm at my computer, but I'm moving my mouse with my mouse pad. If I move my mouse to a certain spot and I click my mouse, and then I start typing, you will notice that the typing went exactly where I clicked. Now I'm going to do the rest of this at the board so that you can watch, but it is the same movements as if I were at the computer itself or I'm at the board using this keyboard. So let's say that I want to put problem one over here or sentence one. So I go over here and I click. Notice that turned off this one. And now that I've clicked there, when I type a one, it put it where I clicked and I can continue typing as long as I want, and certainly you would not do this kind of work at the board, but for demonstration purposes I am, and so I can type as long as I want. And you'll notice that I have an error, so just like normally I would go back here and hit the space bar. If I want number two to be over here, then I'll click over here and I'll say I want number two to be over here. Now, the reason that I clicked in between is that I want these to be separate entities. Um, I'm not going to finish that and take your time, but you will notice then I'm going to move the keyboard down here and we're going to put number three over here. And so I clicked where I wanted it to go and then I started typing and number three is over there. The reason I want these to be separate entities is I'm going to minimize the keyboard so it's out of the way. What if I decide I don't like number two over here? I can now move, because number two is a separate entity, I can now move number two over there, and I could move number three down a little bit. And so the reason I would make, now what you could have done is that when we had number one open, notice one more time, I'm double clicking. Double click gets me a white circle. Let me, a single click just makes it movable. But if I double click with my mouse or my finger, I get a little white circle here and a little white circle here. And that means I'm in edit mode. And that means I could highlight the word number and I could change it to something else. I could go up here and I could choose colors and I could make that orange instead. Notice it's now orange. Um, so I could have done that, but back to if I double click, if I'm at the end of this sentence, I could have hit a return. And I could have typed number two down here. But if I had typed number two down here, now number one and number two would be in the same box. And I don't want that. I want to have the flexibility of being able to move these around. Um, it may not be that two was up here and then two is down here. It may be that you just want two farther down the page so that you leave a little more space underneath number one. Um, as a teacher, you create lots of space so that students have a place to write. And so this kind of flexibility just allows you to decide where do you want these and how do you want them spaced. 
Now, what if you're typing a story? Um, for example, I have a picture. I'm going to go here to my page sorter, and I'm going to go back up to the top because I think somewhere here I have some typing. Some of my pages have disappeared. <laughs> Let's pretend that this is typing, and this was typed by a keyboard. If I wanted to continue on with a paragraph, I would just keep typing. By the way, this one is locked, so I'm going to unlock it. I would just continue typing. And when I get to the other side of the page, over here, with my typing, hit a space bar. If I continue, and I know I'm not using good punctuation, but I just want you to see, as, as I got to the far side, it word wrapped back around, and yes, continue isn't spelled right, but you get the idea. So if you don't want it to be separate, you don't click. You click when you start, you type across, when you get to the far side, it will word wrap back. If you decide that you want this box to be narrower, you can take the white circle and you can make it narrower, or you can take the white circle and you can stretch it you can't stretch it off the page, of course, but you can stretch it. So that's our other option. Now let's go back to that list where we were. So it does seem like our touch is off just a little bit. Number two says... And, and, of course, I've got this title word in the way, so let me move that out of the way. Notice how easily I can do that. Your second option is click, type a sentence or a paragraph, and use word wrap. In other words, they won't be separate pieces. It'll be one whole paragraph, one whole sentence. Those are your choices. Okay? And, again, notice that that goes back in place. All right, now let's talk about font. When I press the A, there is no reason to press this, press this A unless you want to change the default font. Normally, you're in the mouse tool, you click, and you start typing. I didn't go to any text tool to start typing. You just click and start typing. The software knows that if it's coming from a keyboard, then it must be typing. The reason the A is in the toolbar is to allow you to change your default font. Right now, my default font is this one. I have six choices. Um, my, I have so many tools in my toolbar that some of the properties have been kicked over here. Now, if you don't put as many tools up there as I have, then this property bar will fit into this space. But because I've got so many, I have to go here. Notice this font is Arial 36. If I go to this one, it is Arial 18. In a normal classroom where the rows are four to five seats, we suggest that you use Arial, not Arial, you can use whatever font you want, but you use size 24. 24 will give you the maximum number of words on the page, but allow that student in the last seat to see. You really don't need to use 36. 36 doesn't allow much space on the board, on the on the window, and it also um, isn't necessary because it's plenty big enough for students to read at 24. So we have those options. Notice this one is not only Comic Sans, a different font, but it's size 24, and it's also been set at blue color. Now, this toolbar that has these options is only at the moment. In other words, if I want to type, and I would like to type here, but I would like it to be something different than blue Comic Sans, let's say I want it to be red Comic Sans, then I change it to red, and I click, and I start typing. And you will notice that I get red Comic Sans size 24. However, as I just said to you, you only have these six choices. And let's say that you would like one of these choices to be red. 36 here is probably not one you would use very often. So if I go here and I leave it as Arial, but I change it to 24, and I change it to red, it's not going to stay there. Because these changes are only at the moment. And that's why this properties toolbar is only useful when you want to make changes 
for that one time. If I were to leave this and come back, this would be back to black. So how do you change it? Because we all want to have it our own way. Well, you'll notice that I'm going to go over here and I'm going to get rid of that toolbar by just clicking and I'm going to open the properties toolbar. Now I'm going to minimize the, the keyboard so that you can see. In the properties toolbar I need to pick one of these because I'm telling the computer I want to change this one. Remember it was 36, way too large. Let's change that to 24 and let's change it to that red we wanted. At the very bottom it has the option save tool properties. When I click that, this font is no longer the one it was. It is now red Arial. And when I go over here and start typing with that keyboard, you will notice that it is Arial and it is red and it is size 24. If I leave that and come back, no matter what happens, that's still going to be red area. So when you want to change it just for the moment, you can click the A. You can go here and you can make changes and you can type. But any changes you make will not be saved. To save those changes for future use, you have to, instead of using this color palette, you have to go here and change it and then scroll to the bottom and hit save. And you will notice that right now, I'm going to do that one more time. At the bottom, save is not an option. It's there, but because I haven't made any changes, it's not letting me. Now if I would change this to a different color, like I just changed it to that teal color, now save is an option. And if I were to press it, my red would no longer be there and it would now be teal. So to make changes, you do that.